Hey, gang. So have you seen these before? They're called QR codes, and I kind of like to think of them as barcodes on steroids. Here's how QR codes work. Just like a barcode's link to information about stuff that you buy at the store, you can link QR codes to all sorts of different kinds of information like text or pictures or videos or even websites. All you need to do to get going with QR codes is just take a mobile device that has a QR code scanner on it, scan that code, and whatever information is linked to it will come right up. Let me introduce you to Amy Baldwin. Amy teaches art and technology over at St. Paul Lutheran Schools in Millington. And earlier this year, I got to learn from some of her students about how they had created QR codes to document a field trip that they had taken to Washington, D.C. This video has two parts. The first part will be of Amy showing how she has her students create their own QR codes. And the second part, I'll share some ideas of how you can use QR codes in your own classroom. As always, we hope this sparks some great ideas and enjoy. Hi, I'm Amy Baldwin and I teach kindergarten through eighth grade art and technology at St. Paul Lutheran School in Millington and I'd just like to teach you um, a little bit about QR codes and how we've used them in the classroom. What are QR codes you might ask? Uh, it just stands for a quick response and they were developed in Japan uh, back in the 90s to track vehicle parts and um, you read them by using your smart device, whether it's a phone or any other device that you may have. QR codes can store anything from uh, website URLs to plain text, phone numbers, um, pretty much anything that has um, an alphabet and numbers in it. These are just a few ideas of what some of my kids came up with on how we can use QR codes in the classroom. Scavenger hunts, um, we used QR codes in our school newsletters, um, and the possibilities are endless. Real world applications to QR codes, so how are you going to use this once you're out of school? Um, they can be used for things like uh, delivery confirmation, mobile ticketing, advertising is way big on this. You're probably seeing it all over the place. Uh, coupons are a really good way to use QR codes. And my kids found several different uh, places where QR codes can be found. And these are just a few of them, from buildings to tattoos, stickers, rugs, hats, and all sorts of things. And there's a picture of Elizabeth with uh, her QR code on her school newsletter. These are just a few examples of how a QR code looks. You can change the colors of them, and we've seen some very artistic QR codes as well, not just plain solid colors here. Um, but they can be used for text, emails, to share URL codes, uh, websites that you'd like to share, um, a link to a map, or even a video. And it doesn't matter which way you turn your QR code. It can be upside down, it can be standing um, on end as long as the three uh, squares in the corner that you see there are visible. And what if you don't have a smartphone, like I do not have a smartphone or any other smart device to read these, you can go to the website here at the bottom, snapmyinfo.com, take a digital photo of it um, and upload it to snapmyinfo.com and they will read it for you. It's a little bit lengthier process. Um, but it does the job. How do you make your own QR code? It's super easy um, and one of my students made a video to show exactly how to do it uh, but it's very simple. There's just four little steps. First thing you want to do is find a site that makes QR codes. Something like QRstuff.com will work just fine. When you get there, there will be different buttons on the side like you see here. The first function we'll focus on is making plain text. To do that, you go over here and hit the button that says plain text. Over here, you'll see that a text box appears. Click on that and type what you want to say. For example, I'm going to type hi. You'll notice that the QR code expands with more information that you put on it. So if I were to type do something more, like hi, I'm Tim the QR code will expand with the more information. So the next function we'll work on is turning a YouTube video into a QR code. The first thing you want to do is hit the button that says YouTube video and then 
you t either put in the URL or the video ID. For this one, we'll put in the video URL. I have a tab up here that leads me directly to the video that I want. I just copy this, take it back to QR stuff, and then paste it in the box that says video URL. Our third and final step will to turn a Google's Maps location into a QR code. To do that, we click the button that says Google Maps Location. After this, in this button, you type whatever location that you want and it will take you there, thus giving you the location for your QR code. And then how do you scan a QR code? The first thing you have to do is download a QR code reader from um, your apps and on your device. Then you open the app, you aim, you shoot, you scan the code, and then uh, your device will prompt you whether you want to open it immediately or save it for later or to share it. And these are some great websites, especially the last one there, 45 Interesting Ways to Use QR Codes. Check these out if you have some extra time and um, hope you are able to use QR codes in your classroom. Hey gang, so I just want to piggyback a little bit off of all those resources that Amy shared with us. Definitely check those websites out. Now, um, if you were to do a Google search for QR codes in the classroom, or let's say QR codes in math, or QR codes in elementary, you're going to find a ton of resources, so much that you're not even going to know what to do with it all. Um, but two of my favorite places to go for ideas on QR codes, and pretty much everything else, are uh, Kathy Schrock's Guide to Everything, and Tom Barrett's Interesting Ways. The websites are, are right up here. Definitely check those out because those will give you kind of some help on getting things started with using QR codes, but also just some actual uses of those that you can use in your classroom. Now, here's some other examples, and I won't spend much time on this, but as a former chemistry teacher, I, I really like this one. Uh, it's the periodic table of videos, and what this person did is they went and created QR codes for every element in the periodic table, and I just thought that was really cool. Now, this would help be a little more wide-ranging, but think about what happens when your students are out of your class and they need help. How can you give them that support? Well. QR codes are a way that you could do this. This was done by a good friend of mine, Matt Withers, who teaches biology over at Michigan Center High School. And what he did is he attached QR codes to his worksheets. And in this case, they're working on glycolysis. Well, the QR code is there, so if a kid takes that home and has to work on it, and mom and dad have no clue about what glycolysis is or how to help, he can scan that and he can get some help. Now you could use this idea for anything and any subject. Let's say you're a math teacher and you have the kids that go home and they get stuck and they don't know where to go next. Well, why not make a tutorial, a screencast or a video, something really quick, just showing how to do that example problem and then attach it to a QR code and put that QR code up there. You could also, if you don't have time to make it yourself, go and find a Khan Academy video and link that video to a QR code and then when your kids get stuck they can scan that and they can get ideas. I really like this as well, the idea of scavenger hunts and stations. What QR codes can let you do is you can put up different stations or different spots around your room or around the gym or wherever that happens to be and as kids get to each spot they can scan that QR code and it'll give them either directions or it'll give them more information. I've seen people who have done this where it's a, oh, a, a biology unit about trees or plants and they'll go outside and the teacher will have put QR codes next to those certain plants or trees and it'll give them information or other things that they need to do. I really like this one. This was done by a PE teacher down in, uh, in Australia. And what he wanted to do was he wanted to help his kids have a more interactive experience learning the skeleton and the, the bones and everything else like that. So what he did is he created QR codes and attached those to different parts of the skeleton, different bones and things like that. And as kids would scan that, they'd get different kinds of information that they needed in order to do the assignment. 
Another thing you can use QR codes for is to check answers. Now when I was teaching, one of the things that I would do is whenever we'd have a test review, I'd always like to have an answer a sheet there so that kids could make sure that they had all the right answers. Well without fail, I would always have the one kid who would get done and not know what to do next, or I'd have the kid who would grab the answer sheet and not bring it back, or just all sorts of different problems. Why not create QR codes that link to answers on that test review so that way kids can when they're done they can go up they can scan that they can get the make sure their answers are all correct and also you're not going to lose anything you can always reprint that QR code and be just fine and this is another good one think about all that we're being asked to do with collecting data and how we want kids to analyze data well why not create QR codes that link to Google Forms and as kids do a lab or do an experiment or anything like that, they can scan those different QR codes at different points and fill in the, the information on that Google form. Well, those are just a few ideas about how you could use QR codes in your classroom. I hope it sparks some ideas, but the trick to this working in your classroom is going to be how do you take all of this stuff that we've been talking about and tweak it to make it work for your specific situation. We hope this gave you some great ideas. We look forward to seeing you on our next video and see you then.